Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the spell Summon Elemental. Yes. Another summon spell. Another summon spell. We're I we have to be close to through all of these. This is not the as close everything. as you think, because I thought we were close a while ago, and then I looked over what we haven't covered, and uh, yeah, there's one or two left. All right, fair enough. This is uh, again Tasha's called an everything summon spell. So a lot of these words are going to sound familiar. It takes an action to cast, ninety foot cast range. It takes a uh, verbal somatic material components, air, a pebble, ash, water inside a or, or and water. So all four inside a gold inlaid vial worth at least four hundred gold. So you need to spend a gold to have access to this. Concentration up to an hour. You call forth an elemental spirit and manifest an unoccupied space you can see within range. Corporeal corporeal form uses the elemental spirit stat block. When you cast a spell, choose an element, air, fire, earth, water. Creature resembles a bipedal form breathed in the chosen element, which determines certain traits in the stat block. Creature disappears when it drops to zero points or when the spell ends. Creature is an ally to your companions in combat. It shares your initiative, takes a turn after yours, it obeys your verbal commands. If you don't issue any, it takes dodge action. When you cast to higher levels, it does more things. It's got a big old stat block. The stat block is a bunch of resistances and immunities and stuff <laughs> and AC, extra attack. The important thing is it attacks twice at uh, fourth level. It attacks three times at sixth level. And it goes up from there. The AC is equal to this 11 plus the spell level of the spell. So at the gate for a fourth level spell, their AC is 15. They get a bunch of HP. They cast above fifth level from 50 to 60, 70, 80, etc. Spell is a lot of things. All right, and something you kind of skipped over. Um, because I when I look at these summon things, I like to see what other cool effects they do. And you know, they got they got uh different speeds. So the earth yes. has burrow speed, air has a hover, and water has swim. And fire right. just is stuck waddling around. Fire gets nothing <laughs> fancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the burrow speed I... is definitely the most notable, I think, of those. I think the earth burrow speed is really cool. Yeah, because not, not many things have burrows. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond just the different speeds, so resistances, water gets acid resistance, air gets thunder and lightning resistance, earth gets piercing slashing resistance, fire gets immunity to poison, and they or immunity to fire, and they all get immunity to poison. So fire gets immunity where the rest of them get resistances to stuff. They're all immune to a bunch of conditions. They all speak primordial. They all have amorphous form. I'm sorry, all but earth have amorphous form. And amorphous form means the element can move through a space narrow as one inch. And then they all without also... squeezing. What does that mean? Normally you have to squeeze. <laughs> is squeezing <laughs> a, a defined condition in D, D So when you're crawling and stuff, yes. I don't I don't know the rules at the top of my head, <laughs> specifically for navigating in very thin spaces, but I believe it has something to do with being able to squeeze and slowing you down, like you have to crawl and stuff. Oh, all right. I didn't I genuinely didn't know that squeezing was a, a, a an official D, &D I, term. I think basically what this is saying from my off, off the top of my head knowledge. They can move through spaces narrow as an inch without slowing down. Yeah, that's fine. Which is novel. Finally, uh, multi attack. They all get a D four plus or D ten plus four to hit or to damage, plus the spell's level of bludgeoning damage if it's air, earth, or fire, or air, earth, or water, and fire damage if it's fire. This, I think, dear listeners and viewers, should highlight the fire elemental. <clears throat> it sucks. Like. It gets fire immunity. And that's it. The rest of the text the fire elementals get is not good. I don't know why they couldn't have a fly speed like air did. That's kind of a bummer. This is one of those... This is a spell of the few instances where I would more eagerly point to the conjure elemental spell as something you should take over this. Because some elemental doesn't do a lot. Outside of the burrow speed on the earth elemental, what are you excited about here? Like, what what about this air elemental or this water elemental or this fire elemental get you eager to cast it? What about this elementals comes to life here? Well, nothing. I mean, the, and we keep coming back to this with these summon spells where, I mean, you, I mean, yeah, a lot of them are powerful, but I don't know, for, for what, for the fantasy they're evoking, they do very little that excites me like when i when i when i think elementals i want to see some elemental stuff happening this is just you summon a guy and he, he punches or whatever but he looks like water yeah. i don't know that's not super exciting for me but they said the same thing with the uh 
some in Celestials. Of course, those had some actual different kind of effects that are kind of cool, but still, it's uh, not Celestial cool. Yeah, I think this one fails the most as far as being still engaging and interesting and fresh and new, still doing something that evokes the fantasy. Like, I think Conjure Fiend, or Summon Fiend, um, that does pretty well in giving you, like, the little thing that's fitting fireballs. Summon mm. Shadow Spawn gives you this this cool suite of options as far as big terrifying force of death that slows everything down or the sneaky shadowy stalker creature that you can summon that gets bonuses to stealth or the there's another one that does something else with darkness i think or frightened effects that gets advantage attacks against frightened creatures or something those all feel like they're at least evoking a bit more of the fantasy for me and I, they're, they're cool effects yeah, those are all the reasons you cast the spell is to get one of those effects. It's what separates it from all of the other conjure spells. For this summon spells. Summon spells. I'm sorry. God, there's so yeah, many They confuse me too. Yeah, there's so many words that mean almost the same thing, but yeah. they're distinctly different. I get really if I'm gonna spend the time to go through and create pick a conjure spell, right? If I'm picking a uh, sorry, a summon spell, if I'm a <laughs> druid, ranger, or wizard casting one of these, this is has to be one of the least interesting. Summon Beast isn't particularly evocative, but at least it's a second level spell that you can upcast and downcast, so you have a lot more flexibility with it. I feel like that does almost the same thing as this. It does. All, the only reason I would consider this is the Burrow Speed. It's the only reason. And the Burrow Speed just, that can't be the most unique thing on this for it to be that What, what are you doing with the Burrow Speed? Tumbling through the ground like a badger. Standing behind your Earth Elemental to, as it To what end? The What's down and, there? I don't know, you're sneaking into a dwarven fortress or something. Yeah. There's gonna be some really cool applications where you like you you don't know how to get into a building, and a burrow speed's a very fun way to get into a building. And that's a cool little problem that this addresses. It's the only problem that this really addresses, <laughs> because outside of that, it's just you have a fly speed or a swim speed, and swim speed is not particularly notable, it's not particularly exciting. It's something that it says this spell is castable underwater. Okay. The hover speed is good. You can have an air elemental carry you around, sure. A lot of other summons just have that. On, in addition to all the other things they get. And what you're forsaking here, like, where I think it really nails to me that this one missed the mark. The air elemental, earth elemental, fire elemental, and water elemental, they aren't reinventing the wheel, but, like, water elementals have a well mobility, which each creature within the elemental space makes a DC 15 save. It takes 2d8 damage and is grappled, like, it whelms it in, and it gra can grapple multiple things, and it feels like it's a living whirlpool. It's really cool. It's, like, one big differentiating feature on it. It also has like freeze text where it can get frozen and has a bad time with it and that's pretty neat and whatever. But that's more flavor. That can be like dripped away. But Whelm feels like it's something that this spell is really missing. Fire elementals light things on fire and they do it well. They also have like illumination. It feels like this could have really easily had a line just said illumination fire only. It sheds light. But it yeah. doesn't say that. It doesn't say it doesn't have a fire form so things that connect with it take damage or anything like that. These elementals have more interesting text that at least defines what they do. Most monsters of 5th edition make attack rolls and have an AC, and that's the bulk of what they do. Elementals are no exception, but at least the elementals had, they deal fire damage if you touch them, or the whelm, or air elementals knock things around in their whirlwind. There's cool and interesting, like, Earth Glide is the iconic Earth Elemental ability that's functional, like, that's the Burrow Speed trying to sort of relate to you. Earth Glide lets you just walk through stone and stuff that's super neat. This, those cool elements being absent from the spell is a huge disservice to it. It's why I would say, if I am a DM for you, I would just let you use those stat blocks instead. It's the same spell level. It's a fifth level spell in either case. Just replace the specific summons here with the real things. Sure, they have more HP by almost double. Sure, they are a lot more powerful, but that's something that you could already get out of the player's handbook. And it is going to really deliver on the fantasy in a way that's con or that summon elemental just can't. All right. Well, you are drastically changing the spell. Yeah. But uh, as it stands, I mean, these are essentially things that, you know, one can fly, one can swim, one can burrow, but they're just elemental dudes that do some damage. And that's not good enough. For well, me. but I mean, how much damage comparatively are we looking at compared to, uh, you know, other, this is what a uh, fourth level. Yeah. Fourth level spell. Oh, this is, this is a level cheaper than contra elemental. All right. That's notable. Um, so multi tagging D 10 plus eights is, or sorry, D 10 plus four plus spell level. So they're hitting D 10 plus eight. A lot of the time Two D 10 or two D 10 plus 16 is a ton of damage around. This is 
still a summon spell from Tasha's Cauldron to everything. The floor yeah. on it is multi-attacking D10s, and that's good. It's a big chunk of HP with a decent AC, with a good speed, hitting twice around for that much damage. Neat. Compare it to every other Tasha's Cauldron of everything spell, and every other of the summon effects, they all do that. They all yeah. do that with upside. And this is very crucially missing that with upside bit, at least more so than the others are by quite a bit. Yeah, it's doing enough right. damage. It's still fine. You're still not going to cast this ever and go, that did nothing. It's still going to be a summoned ally that is all the things a summoned ally does. It's just a really boring summoned ally. You're not summoning an elemental. You're summoning Ted with a bat. And the varying flavor of, is Ted on fire? Is Ted a genie? Is Ted a, a mole? Those are sort of what evokes <laughs> more to me than elementals. This is missing a huge amount of force of nature to it. It's missing the mark by a lot, I think. And this is you know what I keep saying about all the summon spells. Yeah, Shadow Spawn being a notable exception. And there are a couple other exceptions too. But um yeah. Uh, Amorphous it doesn't carry enough. It it needed more text and it didn't get it. I wonder. The the, the burrow speed, does that leave a tunnel behind you that you, that behind it that you can crawl through? Oh god, I don't remember. I think it does. I've DM'd the, in the undead campaign I DM'd, our druid turned into a large badger, and I remember letting the group go out behind her as she was done. Well, that's different, though. That's that, the, the batters, the giant batters have a burrow speed, specifically. Yes, and they're also giant. I'm thinking the amorphous property might uh, combine with the the burrow speed, and the reason you can go through the earth so easily is because it doesn't have to go through much of it. That's a that's a fair point. So the base of the burrow trait, you can't, you can't move through solid rock, so that's a bummer. Looks like tremors. Yeah. So did you see, did you see tremors, Sam? I have not seen tremors. Oh, I know it's. A... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just a failure when it comes to being a movie buff. Most of the consensus that I'm seeing is that burrow speeds don't typically lead behind a tunnel. I think your mileage is going to vary based on your GM because I don't know how robust rules are written around that. And it's probably buried somewhere in the monster manual. That's where I would recommend looking for it if you were looking for an answer to that question. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I would say this spell's bad enough you should allow it to give a tunnel yeah. because otherwise, no. They're medium too, which is a huge, like you're right, these aren't large. The elementals from Contra Elemental are large. I don't know. I don't know, Bob. I don't know. I think this one might be the only one I rate lower than the rest. All right. Well, are we, are we there yet? Man, do you have any other questions or thoughts about it? It's not really. I've kind of been there's nothing. See, there's nothing to ask because they don't do yeah. anything. They just punch or whatever. They're punching their amorphous. Yeah. Neat. They can go under a door every once in a while. That's <laughs> they're okay at infiltration, I guess. If they're earth, oh no, they're not. So no, they're not amorphous if they're earth. So the the example that you were talking about about them slipping through the earth, no, they're not amorphous. It's the only elemental that doesn't get the amorphous trade wow. is earth. Instead, they get the burrow speed and nothing else. Yeah. Man, fire right. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that makes sense then. Um. All right. Well, you got a rating? I think I'm going to do it. This is a three. It's still a summon spell. It's still giving you a good thing that's going to do a decent chunk of damage with a good AC and a good chunk of hit points. It defends itself. It's fine. You can do better than this on Wizard and Druid. All the other summon spells I would recommend over this. I'd recommend con this is a, one of those rare cases. I'd recommend a conjure spell over this just because of how inadequate flavorfully this delivers its fantasy this is conjure man with fists to punch and that's not exciting <laughs> with varying flavors of element it's well i mean the, the reason you don't normally recommend the conjure spells though is, i mean because they're too complicated they're too complicated oftentimes your dm gets to select and it puts a lot of burden onto the dm oh, the conjure yeah. spells are really really powerful and have yeah. a lot of game warping potential to them I normally would say summon spells hit that middle ground a lot better. Hit, summon spells give you a powerful effect that doesn't entirely reshape how the DM has to DM things. The DM doesn't have to do a lot of work. The DM doesn't have to figure out what all you're getting summons are. And if they are going to be the ones giving the monsters, or if you're the ones going to be picking the monsters you want, it doesn't It doesn't ask all the annoying questions that the conjure mm -hmm. spells do. I think the, this instance, that is worth it. I think the conjure spells figuring out how to do it fairly, even for the, it's again, that's a level higher than this. But that is going to deliver the fantasy this is trying to deliver in a real way. This isn't going to deliver that fantasy. All right. Yeah, I'm agreed with you. Uh, three out of five sounds about right. All right, viewers. Well, 
as always, we'd love to hear your comments. Let us know what you think. Um, is this better or worse than what we've presented here? <clears throat> that was uh, Summon Elemental. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.